Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Yes, today it's all about character building. And uh, we're going to continue down the train of Beck Me or Basic Dungeons and Dragons. This is this rule set here, or the compiled rule set of Basic or Beck Me. Uh, right here. This is the one. This is what we're, we're going to do today. Uh, and we're going to do something that's a little different. This is the Ranger, actually, a homebrew Ranger class because it doesn't exist in Beck Me. Um, it's a AD and D that we would be looking at a ranger really. So <clears throat> therefore we have a homebrew version, uh, courtesy of um, Jasper. And so I'm gonna put up a poll, feel free to take part in that poll. Um, and yeah, grab some food to drink, get comfortable. You will need dice people. I need you to roll dice for me. Okay, that way I'm not doing all the work. So rolling of some dice might be required. And then of course, there's probably gonna be some surprises along the way. Anyway, let's get started. That's why you're here. Let's make this happen. Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Weller, and today I want to talk about role-playing games and building a character, building a ranger. That's right, a ranger class for Beck Me or Basic Dungeons and Dragons. And as I've said before, it, it, it doesn't exist. <laughs> um, there never really was one. So we're dealing with a homebrew ranger for Beck Me or Basic D&D. For those of you who are interested, and for those of you who are not interested, well, clearly you'll, you'll, you'll leave. Um, but, but that's all right. So what I would really like you to do is I'm going to type in some information into the chat, get people moving. Um, I really need you to have three six-sided dice, rolling six-sided dice, and you'll need an eight-sided dice as well. I'm going to need you to roll some dice for me today to, to actually build this character. Hello Dungeons and Chronics, how are you doing? So, <clears throat> with any luck, there's somebody who has some six-sided dice. Three six-sided dice is definitely what we require. Next, let's do a, while I'm jumping over to the, uh, the character sheet, um, what will be the, be the ranger's name? All right. Let's see if you can come up with a name. Dungeons and Chronics, I'm sure you can do that. You could come up with a name. And I will uh, share the character sheet with you. And we will start to plug away at this. Here we go. Here is our character sheet. Courtesy of Jasper a AK, who, uh, in fact, not only is responsible for making the homebrew ranger that we're dealing with today, but also this character sheet. So thank you, Jasper. I do appreciate it. Okay, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to chuck in Ranger. We're going to only go to ra Ranger level 1, okay, because this is the first time I've built a Ranger with this these rule, this rule set, so I'm, I'm not going to get carried away. I'm not going to get silly. And then we're going to start dealing with um, rolling some six-sided dice in a second once people get a chance to sort of get their dice warmed up and, and moving. And we'll fill in all of our ability scores. Then we'll do the adjustments. I can put in saving throws because fortunately ability scores are don't determine what your saving throw is in, in Beck Me. They, they are just set numbers based off your class and your level. So that's nice and easy. So we'll go down the line. We're going to be rolling very shortly. So um, hashtag, let's go here. Hashtag, uh, please roll three d6 for ability scores okay all right so while i'm waiting for people to come in and start rolling those dice um, please give me all three numbers when you roll your dice your, your six-sided dice so i can add them up it's good if i can actually show people the mathematics as i go and explain it as you know um, i'm all about helping people learn how to do this sort of stuff so anything that will make it easier for them intelligence so i'm just making a note here on a piece of paper and then i'm going to start filling in some of the details that we can put in now while we're waiting for some numbers to be rolled <coughs> dexterity dexterity and constitution the last one charisma constitution and charisma charisma okay right 
Okay, so we've got a name. Let's put in this first name. Let's start with that. And I will start filling in some of the maths for this character, okay? J O L is it H U N? Yep. Got it. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Dungeons and Chronics. I appreciate that. So this is the character sheet, but this is the Ranger class. It's got all the information, it's two pages long. Uh, the Ranger has a lot of special abilities, uh, like uh, many of the classes, and it also has spell casting, but at later later levels. We're not going to be dealing with spell casting today, because you don't get spell casting in Beckme in this, uh, this version until level 8. <clears throat> Very much a reflection of AD&D. Uh, unlike modern D&D, where Rangers apparently can start to start casting spells left, right and centre as soon as they come out of the gate. So you've rolled a 4, a 1 and a 3 for strength. Okay, so we'll go 4, 1 and 3 for strength. That comes to 8. <clears throat> and I am going to now, with the while I'm waiting for the next slot of... So Dungeons and Chronics, if you're the only one who's going to roll dice, could you keep rolling dice? I need six sets of numbers or five more sets of numbers to make this work. So I'm going to put in the um, the saving throws for this character. So based off <clears throat> the information that's provided here, where is it? Our combat matrix. Rangers use both the fighter attack chart and the saving throw chart. So the saving throws for a ranger are identical to the fighter. So that's nice and easy. So what are they? Well, if I go over here, and scroll up a little bit. We'll far to find them, surely. Yes, 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 yes. There we go. Here we go. So 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So the ranger has exactly the same saving throws between level 1 and level 3 as the fighter. So ranger saving throws exactly the same as fighter from level 1 to 3. And it would... Obviously, beyond level 3, it would be the same again. So let's put in those numbers into our character sheet. <clears throat> so the first one was 12 for Poison and Death death Ray. So 12. Here we go. And the next one for Magic Wands, the saving throw is a 13. Next one is Turn to Stone or Paralysis. We get a 14 for that one. For a saving throw. The uh, Dragon Breath saving throw, that is a 15. Now, the smaller the number, the better it is. The higher the number, the worse you are off. 16 for spells and magic stuff. Okay, cool. Well done. That's that down. Let's let's have a look at the next thing we can do. We can probably fill in our two hit roll chart or table right now because those numbers are going to be essentially the same. So what we will do is I, I'll go through them now, plug in those numbers, and Dungeons and Chronics has been nice and busy rolling away frantically for me. Thank you very much. So um, the next lot of numbers, intelligence, is a 3, plus a 3, and a 6. So that's 12 for our intelligence. And then our next set of numbers, 3, 2, and a 6. 3, 2, and 6 come out at a 11. Okay, and the next set of numbers to dexterity is a 1, a 1, and a 6, which comes to an 8. I just need two more sets of numbers, and um, yeah, we're uh, we're pretty much done. So let me put in these some of these numbers now. So the strength came out as an eight. First set of numbers that he gave me, twelve for intelligence. Next is eleven for wisdom, and eight for dexterity. Okay, cool. All right. So <clears throat> while we're doing that, let's move on to the next step. Um, and if I can just grab this. We should be able to fill in uh, the hit roll chart for level 1 to 3 is on page 36 of the basic rules. So 36, so we go here, 38, should take us to 36, pretty much close enough. I'll zoom it in so you can actually see what we're looking at. So this thing we're looking for is the character hit roll table. Along the top it gives you the armor class you can hit, and along the bottom is the attack roll that you have to make. Okay, so a zero is a 19. So if we would get 19 for our attack roll, we can hit armor class zero. Lower numbers are better, higher numbers are worse. So zero is 19. So we go over here, 19. And then we just pro pro progressively, it just goes down from there. So 18, 17, 
16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, and 10. And if you don't get an attack roll of at least 10, chances are you can't hit diddly squat because if you have, you're hitting an uh, armor class of nine, which isn't very good, they're pretty much stark naked, okay? They got no armor on, they got no shields or anything like that. Hello, Fred Huber, how are you doing? Nice to have you here. Thank you for being here. Okay, let's get the rest of our numbers in for our, our character because this is going to get very interesting. Um, for those of you who are unaware, <laughs> It's a it's a big huge shift to go from what we've been building in the past to, to building a ranger. So um, Dungeons Chronics, you gave me a three, a five, and a six for Constitution. That will come out at a that's 11, 14, 14 for Constitution. Okay, and the Charisma you rolled up a a one, a two, and a four, and. <laughs> if, the, if the ads will stop, yeah, I don't know the, I know the feeling. Six, seven, so we got a seven. Okay, so let's plug in those numbers into our character sheet. We'll do that now. So uh, fourteen here, and a a seven here. Okay, so there's a couple of things we needed to check in terms of our character build. Did we roll high enough that we don't have to re-roll, and do we fulfil the requirements of the class? Um, and so this is where things are going to get a little bit different to what you're used to. Okay, so going back here, all right, we're going to put those the penalties there. Let's not deal with that just yet. Let's deal with, do we fulfill the, the prerequisite, the minimum stats for demi-human? So a ranger is a demi-human. You're playing a, you're playing a ranger, which means you, it's a human, basically. Um... And, and so there are some requirements for the Barbarian and the Ranger. So they're required to have a strength and intelligence of 13 to be able to, at, that's at level 1. Like when you start off, so my strength and my intelligence are nowhere near 13. Okay, you see I've got an 8 and an, a 12. So I can't fulfill that. So right now I can't play a Ranger. Also my wisdom and constitution must also, when I'm starting out at level 1, needs to be 14. Now you'll notice that my con is 14, but is there a, another number there? You see that? Wisdom and con as well. My, my wisdom is only 11. So I do not fulfill the requirements. I would need to have some big numbers, and I can't readjust this to fix this. So this is one of the problems of this ranger, is the chances are you're never going to get to play the ranger unless you're rolling more than three dice and getting much higher numbers, maybe even five dice to get your numbers. Or you get super lucky uh, with your dice rolls and it allows you to play a ranger at level one. So since I can't go through and do the normal adjustments, because one of the requirements too when you're, when you're rolling up your stats is if you, you have to re-roll if two or more scores are less than six. Okay, less than six. So we've got nothing that's less, um, less than six. That's not the problem. And... The highest ability score is, is a 9 or less. Well, we've got a 14, so that's not a problem. But we don't fulfill the ranger requirements, so this is what I have to do. I'm just going to push those numbers up, because there's nothing else I can do to make this work, because it's such a restrictive class. So strength and intelligence must be 13. Strength, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to push them there, okay, just like that. Not because you normally can, and intelligence 13. I need them to be at least a 13, so I'm just going to make it that. And then the wisdom and con needs to be 14. Well, con is already 14, but wisdom isn't, so I need that to be 14. And that's it. I'm not going to change the dexterity, I'm not going to change the charisma, because I've just had to push those numbers to be able to actually play this class. Does that make sense? Please do not get confused. This is not what you would normally do. Okay, I'm just doing it for the purposes of we're trying to actually build a ranger today. I'll be useless in an hour if I have to. <laughs> okay, all right. So let's put in our adjustments now that we've done the, had to push a few scores up a bit higher. So 13 to 15 is a plus one. So 13 to 15, plus one. Plus one, 13 to 15. 
plus one, 13 to 15, that's also a plus one. Uh, and this one is also a plus one. Okay, so eight and seven, we need to know what eight and seven tells us. So our adjustment, it's not the same sort of adjustment or modifier that you're used to people. So seven and eight is a minus one. Seven and eight will be minus one. And minus one. There we go. So that's done. So we've got those numbers in. Cool. What's the next thing on our, our list that we're supposed to do? Uh, I'm not going to explain how to exchange ability scores because I've had to do a, 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 a big, huge hand wave today. But we do need to roll up our, our hit points. Now, the hit points for a ranger, okay, is a eight-sided dice plus your constitution modifier. So I'm going to get you to roll some dice for that. What I'll... What I did back in the day, started at mm, minus one for the ranger, at dice, uh, blah, 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 blah. okay, all right. Hashtag, please roll a d8 for ranger hit points. There we go. If you could roll D8, I will do the calculation for it. Um, that's our con modifier, and in this case, our con modifier is a plus one. So, hit points. And we'll see what we get, and we'll add plus one to that once we have a number. Ah, we go. Pale Rider, hello, welcome to the stream. He's rolled us an eight. He's rolled two eights. Uh, so an 8 plus 1 equals 9, so we get 9 hit points. Okay, if he rolled an 8 and we add our con modifier, it becomes a, uh, a con adjustment, should I say. It becomes a 9, so it's a bit bigger than it was before. Okay, and we're going to put down here, uh, we're going to put down Fred. I'll put Fred Rick Wheeler. Alright, my name's not that long, is it? Not really. Cool. Thank you for rolling, um, Fred Hoover. Okay, cool. Now let's let's deal with the rest of the character build process. Uh, we've got to do rolling for money. So this is quite normal. So I'm going to type this in, and you're going to start rolling some six-sided dice. So hashtag roll three d six for money. Same as it always, so give me the three numbers, I'll add them together and we'll, we'll work out what our money is. Money, okay, and then the three six sided dice are added together and then you multiply it by 10, that gives you, gives you how many gold, point, um, gold coins you have. So while we're waiting for that, we're going to have to, once we know how much money we have, we'll buy our equipment and our armor, we'll deal with all of that. Um, but before that, we're going to just jump in here and um, and plug in a few more details. So I can I can wangle on wangle down here a little bit. So we get an extra um, a language. Plus one on languages, okay. Plus one on languages. Why? Why? Because there's it says here thirteen to fifteen for your intelligence score determines how many languages you get, and our intelligence is a thirteen. So we we get, we get one extra language. So we'll put that in here. Languages, and that's a plus one, so I remember. That isn't a plus one, but we'll try again. That's better, cool. Um, we've got none, we're level one, so we don't have any spells memorized. Uh, we're dealing with magic user spells. Ma magic user, oops. Take it fit. No, magic user. Let's go here. Magic user and droid. But we don't have any, so we won't need to worry about that just yet. Uh, we don't need to worry about turning the dead because uh, clerics don't clerics turn the uh, the undead and um, rangers don't turn the undead. So we can just go N A on this. You want the language to be elf? Oh, we've got some dice rolls coming through. Awesome. Let me just finish punching these in. So that we keep moving fairly quickly and can complete it nice and timely. 
Yeah. Do do do. There we go. All right, now going back, uh, we will deal with our money. So Fred Hubert has rolled a three, a one, and a one. <laughs> oh no, terrible. Um, three, one, and one comes to a grand total of five. Five times ten equals fifty. So we got fifty gold coins to spend. It's not a lot, but we'll live with it, as we always will with everything. And Pale Rider suggested extra language. Trent, uh, Elf is fine though. We'll put Elf in. Okay, cool. Right now, let's let's determine our equipment. So I'm going to tell you what the deal is with your equipment. Where is it? Back, 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 back. Here we go. So with a ranger, rangers can use all weapons. So you can pick whatever weapon you like. We only have 50 gold though, remember. Um, which means you can have a longbow, short bow, crossbow, you know, sword, whatever. Um, rangers can are trained in all armor and all weapons. So you can use any kind of armor and you can definitely wear a shield if you want to as well. So I'm going to get you to decide what you want. Hashtag. And we'll see how we go. Uh, what weapons, armor, and gear do you want for the ranger? Okay. So now that I've punched that in, let's find the information you require. Um, I believe equipment is on page 29, so I'll grab page 29 so you can actually see what's going on. Uh, 229. No, try again. Uh, is this the one? Yes, this is it. This is the table. It's a bit too far, so we'll just zoom out a little bit so you can actually see it. This is the gear. These are the prices. This is the stuff you can you can pick from. So you. Type in what you want, okay, and um, I'll put that in in a second. I'm just going to have a drink of water, because I need it. Uh, okay, so, so far, we can have a, a bow and a sword and a loincloth. Yes, you could just wear no armor if you wanted to. Probably a really stupid idea, but maybe you just don't go up in the front, front line for now, <laughs> until you've got some decent armor. Um, but yes, you could certainly have... You could have a loin blow, uh, a, a, a long bow. Um, you might have a problem with your your quiver of arrows because it costs a bit of money. But you could probably go with what is it? What's the, the normal sword? Normal sword cost is ten. So you could have um, You could have a you could have a, a short bow, a long sword, and a quiver of arrows for five gold coins, and you'd be done. Leather armor and a longbow. Sling, hide, is a jock strap, throwing knives. Okay, all right, okay, all right, all right. Okay, I see where this is going. Leather armor, you couldn't buy leather armor and a longbow. It just, you won't have enough money. So, um, that's going to be a bit of a problem, eh? A little bit of a problem. What we could do is we can go leather armor and we can go a short bow and some arrows and you'd be done. <laughs> <laughs> that that'd be it. You reckon a sling, throwing knives, sling. Everybody wants to go sling. Why is it that you guys want a sling? Okay, you want a sling. You want a sling. Okay. Well, if you go for a sling, then yeah, things things are gonna be a bit better. <laughs> sling. Ah uh, dear, sling. And I'm I'm assuming you want just a sword, normal sword. It seems to be where we were going with this sword. So sling, sword, 10 for that. That's the sword. Um, you've got your sling. Um, and what else? What else is there that we can pick up here? Uh, we've got sling with 30 stones, sling stones, and it's going to cost us two gold pieces, which is not very much for a sling. Which means we could take, we can we can wear chain mail, we can wear chain mail, and you're going to have to just lift off, lift off the land. How's that sound? 
Or do you want leather armor? Leather armor is 20. Um, okay, so let's go here. Leather. Somebody had said leather before. Leather armor. Which is 20. Okay. All right, let's put that down. Armor leather. Okay, plenty of room for movement now. <laughs> uh, we still have a little bit of money left since we've only got those things. A banana hammock. He killed it with the money roll. <laughs> Sword bow and the dream of more. Yes, exactly. The dream of more. Hope the hopes and dreams of more. <laughs> so I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You can have you can have a short bow with this. You can have a short bow for 25. Short bow. Not a long bow, but a short bow. You can have a short bow. And um I'll let you have uh half a quiver of arrows. I'll be really nice to you, give you a discount. You can have half a quiver of arrows. So short bows, 25, 30. Um, okay, all right. So I'm giving you a dis I'm discounting your short bow and your arrows, babies. Uh, you, you, you're not gonna get everything you want, but you got you got a little bit of stuff there, quiver. Quiver, okay, and let's just not worry about that price. That means you've got no gold left, but you've at least got some weapons. <laughs> Hopefully you like living off the land, baby. You should be. You're a you're a ranger. So um, we'll put in here. We might just cut this actually. Let's go. Go cut. Paste. Paste. Yes. Sling. Short bow. And that one. And then what was the other thing I needed to put in here? Oh, that's right. Your, your arrows, because that's really all you've got. 30 stones. And a quiver. And 10 times arrows. And that is it. You're traveling light today. Traveling light. And all your gold is gone. You are poor. You are a poor ranger. Uh, <laughs> let me just uh, track these in very quickly, and then we'll do the armor calculation for our, our character. A, in A, in A, <laughs> another in A. Because mm, you're not a thief, so you're not going to be getting these. Sorry. I get those. Um, next, we've done that, we've done that, let's do our armor class. So, we have leather armor, and we have a dex adjustment of minus one. <laughs> it's not great, but let's, let's have a look and see how this is going to work. So if you have no armor, your armor class is nine. If you have leather armor, your armor class is seven. So because we've got leather armor, and it's a seven, but we have got a... a um, a number for our, our um, dexterity that's a minus. So your dexterity adjustment uh, per your bonus and penalties table needs to take into consideration is taken into consideration for your armor. So we start off with a seven. That's for the uh, the leather armor. But as it says here, negative dexterity adjustment makes your armor class increase, which is bad. Positive dexterity adjustment makes your armor class decrease. We have hate to say it, a minus one, which means instead of an armor class of seven, we have an armor class of eight, because of the adjustment. So our armor class has been determined. Good news, good news. Things are going well for us. Background beggar, his name is Imbroke. <laughs> um, name, well, I'll tell you what, that could be the second part of his name. How's that sound? That can be the second part of his name. Imbrock. Okay, cool. Uh, we're getting to the point where we're going to start going through special abilities. <laughs> You're going to have a lot of fun seeing all of that. Uh, it's going to make me laugh so much. You don't have any magic weapons, so you've got none. I'm a cruel D DM. I do not allow you to have magic weapons at level one. You've got to find your stuff. 
Um, and then we need to put in some of these other details, which I believe we should be getting there. Uh, right, so we should do our weapon attack rolls and our um, damage output. So with melee attacks, it's your, a d20 plus your strength adjustment. We do have a strength adjustment, so that's, that's good news. So with that, let's do that now. Strength adjustment is a one. So with a sword, our attack would be a d20 plus one. And then for our damage, uh, it's gonna be a little bit different, but the damage roll we'll do in a second. And now for a sling, which is essentially a, a thrown weapon, um, so that is going to be a little bit different, I believe so, for a sling, is that right? No, it's ranged, no, it's ranged, isn't it? It's ranged. So, um, ranged attack roll, d20 plus your dex adjustment. So our dex adjustment's not great, remember, our dexterity is, is a lot less than we would really like it to be for ranged attacks. See, dex minus one, so we're not going to be hitting that often. We're going to try to hit, but we're probably not going to hit that often. Okay, so let's go here, and for that it is a d20 minus one because of our dex adjustment, and then we'll put in our damage. Okay, and then with the bow, it is the same. d20 minus one, and then we'll put our damage in in a second. All right, cool. That's that bit done. Now let's do the damage aspect for our character. Melee damage roll, okay. Close quarter melee damage roll like the sword. Weapon damage dice plus your strength adjustment. We have a plus one for that. So um, for your damage on uh, weapons, where is the page number? Here we go. 36 is the page we need to go to for getting our damage. So back here, 36. I think that's right. No, 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 36. Oh, no, there it is, there it is, right here. See, variable weapon damage, that's the one we want. Let's zoom that right in so you can see it. Okay, so our sling stone does one uh, four-sided dice. So with um, ranged damage, ranged damage is just the, the, the weapon damage dice. There's no adjustment to put into it. Okay, uh, so we're going to just do that. Now, so that is for the sling, D4, done, and for our weapon damage dice for the uh, the short saw, uh, the short bow, should I say, short bow, short bow, short bow, short sword, arrows, here we go, we're dealing with an arrow, so it's 1D6, so it's a D6, and that's it, nothing else. D6, no adjustment. The sword is going to be different because it's a normal sword. So if we go to normal swords, um, normal sword is a D8. See, sword normal, so D8. But we get to add our strength adjustment for this one, okay? Strength adjustment for melee attacks. So weapon damage dice plus strength adjustment. That's for the damage output. So we can put that there. That's a D8. And we have a strength adjustment of one. So we're going to do more damage up close than we are at distance, generally. Okay. So that's as that aspect is done. Uh, his last name is... Oh, <laughs> okay. Really? Really? <laughs> uh, moving down here. Uh, we've we've done this. We've done those adjustments. Um, alignment. Okay, so a ranger must be lawful when they start out. You do not get to choose your alignment. There are two. There are three choices for alignment: chaotic, okay, lawful, and neutral. And we have to be lawful when we start off as a ranger in in Beck Me. This is what he's stated. So lawful it is. No choice. Just that. And. Um, I believe we're going to pump in here. Who's going to be doing this today? Dungeons and Chronics. Dungeons and Chronics. Dungeon and Chronic. There we go. Cool. 
We've got our name of our player. We've got all that filled in. We need to start dealing with some of the other aspects of our character, which we will. We're getting to that. We're not going to worry about uh, dealing with the charisma staff or reaction adjustments or retainer adjustments. No, 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 no. Uh, but we are going to deal with the other things. Experience points. So how many experience points do we have? We have zero experience points. So experience points, zero. And uh, to get to the next level, how many experience points do we require? Well, the table here will tell us. We need 2,250. 2,250. 2,250. There we go. Cool. That's that bit done. Uh, next. Encumbrance. We'll deal with... Well, we're not really encumbered, so but I'll, I'll deal with encumbrance last. Let's deal with some of those special abilities, because that is really why, why you're here in the first place. So we have a damage bonus with a, uh, a ranger. It has a special... Um, thing that they do so we're going to grab a damage bonus and I will go through that actually I might just grab all of these and then just um, chop them up a little bit copy and dro drop them into here paste yep and then I'll just separate them all uh, cut we don't have spells yet so we don't need to worry about that uh, danger sense, yes, tracking, okay, yes. Let's give it a cut. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. There we go. Paste. Information gained. Come on, you. Highlight. Uh, cut. Drop that in here. Paste and tracking, because we have a tracking ability. And cut. Drop that in here. Paste. Cool. All right. Now that we've done that, let us go and have a look at these features that we have. Let's go through this Ranger class. Hello, Jasper. By the way, Jasper, it was much easier to read through the Ranger. Um, so I do appreciate you putting in the, uh, the Combat Matrix stuff. That did help. You're in the house. Yes, you are. There we are. Jasper AK is in the chat. This is the creator of this uh, this class. So, Ranger, um, for back me, Ranger is a human character who hails from the frontiers and wilderness of the known world. Think Aragon or Dritz. Well, I see, yeah. Dritzy. Aragon. Was, oh, I'm going to go with Aragon rather than Dritzy, but anyway. Explanation of the Ranger's experience and special abilities. So, damage bonus. When the Ranger makes a successful physical attack against monsters of giant or goblin class, this is the number of bonus points of da damage added to the damage roll. This ability will be um, further described below. So, if we have a look at our damage roll, there's the table. At level 1, we get a plus 1. So, plus 1 against giants and goblinoid. That's what we need to make sure we put in here. So, um, no, let's not do that. Let's do this. Plus one damage against giant and, uh, come on, Fred. Goblinoid. That's our first ability that we have. Okay. Not dressed. <laughs> yeah, he can't afford to get encumbered. No, that's exactly right. Next, tracking. This is the chance for success when the uh, ranger attempts to both follow and identify tracks. This ability will be described in detail below. And boy, is there a lot of information on it. So we'll get to there. Um, information get, um, get gained. This lists what information about the quarry the ranger uh, gains by studying the tracks. The ranger can learn information from previous levels as as well. For example, a fourth level ranger will be able will be able to identify the creature if the tracks belong to a common or uncommon creature. The number of creatures and the direction of travel, how fast the creatures were moving, and how long they um, how long ago they passed. Um, the frequency of the creature is a of the creatures is a port for from 1e and 2e and uses uh and use and and use of their monster oh, and uses their monster manual and will be used 
and making the determination of whether the ranger can identify creatures making the tracks. So yeah, so he's ported one uh, e and two e a d and d stuff into this. Um, then we have we don't we don't actually have spells at this point, but they do. It does say here druid and magic user um, spells. There is a number of these that you get to use. Um, and that doesn't happen until level 8, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, this is the information around your prime prerequisites, the fact that uh, you have three. So our three prime prerequisites are strength, intelligence, and wisdom. That's a lot for a class. It really is. If a ranger has a 13 in all of their ability scores, um, the ranger gains a 5% a, a, a bonus to all experience earned in every adventure if any scores are 15 or um, gram greater than the experience point bonus is 10 percent so we need to have a 13 in strength intelligence and wisdom so do we strength intelligence wisdom yes we do so that means we get a five percent bonus on our experience put that down there done next minimum scores i just talked about the fact that the um this ranger requires a strength and intelligence score of uh, 13 or greater to be able to even play a ranger and a wisdom and constitution of 14 or greater just to start out. Uh, we've done our hit points, we've got our weapons and armor sorted out, we've done the alignment, hirelings. So rangers cannot be, an, uh, rangers may not employ men at arms, servants, aides or henchmen until they reach level 8. Uh, ranger associates, no more than three rangers may ever operate together at any time so you can't have an entire party of rangers uh i wonder why probably because rangers are really powerful that would be my guess don't you i think it is i've always found rangers in 5e to be quite powerful even though people whine piss and um and and make all sorts of silly comments like <sighs> And usually it's about, they just don't do as much damage in combat, but they do everything else really well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everything else really well. Okay, ranger mobility. Rangers may only retain these goods and treasures that they can carry on their person or their mount. All excess must be donated to a worthy cause. So, ranger mobility. Let's uh, let's take range of mobility. <laughs> this is this is one of the things that I find rather amusing. But let's let's stick this in here. Paste. Uh, range of mobility. We'll put that in. So can oh hang on. Can only only. Ha um, own, can only, 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 come on, only have what they carry, <laughs> there we go, now, um, now I'm assuming um, Jasper, that for this class, because it doesn't necessarily state anything about languages, I'm assuming for the ranger, they get common and an alignment language, which would be lawful, correct, and because there's a, a, a plus one adjustment, we get to pick one other. So I'm assuming that's how it works. If I am wrong, because it doesn't actually state it here, okay, so I'm just assuming that is the case. You will let me know if I'm incorrect about that assumption. So common, alignment, and then we have elf. Yeah, yeah, the oath of poverty. Oh, it's 16. It's even worse. It's even harder to hit. Okay, all right. All right. You've changed it to 16 since then. Phew. Hee -ha. Yeah, all right. You better be rolling a lot of good good rolls to make that happen. Um, Fifteen was a typo. Didn't realize it was a typo. Okay, so... Next, uh, no, no, this is the wrong place. Going down here, Ranger may only retain these goods and treasures, da, 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 so I've, I've said that already. Okay, here we go. Special abilities. Rangers have a wide array of special abilities. Some they can they gain when they start adventuring, and others only when they have attained and require, um, the required level, as listed in the description. Okay, so it gives us a list of what sort of 
um, first level spells you can have as a um, you know druid spells and magic user spells and you're only going to ever get access to first and second level spells either druid or magic user that is it which is fine as far as i'm concerned let's go down here damage bonus against giants and goblinoids a ranger has an innate hatred for these humanoid creatures of chaos that plague the lands of men and as such gain a uh, bonus to damage when a successful um, when it with a successful hit hitting them so the following list of these creatures are subject to their bonuses goblins hobgoblins bugbears gnolls kobolds ogres ogre mages orcs giants any kind uh thro is it thrall through th thuls thuls troglodytes and trolls the dma adjust this list as needed to reflect their campaign okay so we don't really need to worry about that i think we've got that ability down pretty well there i think that's good enough that's gonna have to shorthand it danger sense the ranger has an uncanny sense of danger such that they can only uh they are only surprised on a one in six chance they also quick to react so they they so they surprise creatures with a three and six chance okay this was this was the thing i was having trouble getting my head around last time so okay so um okay so let's go so let's go um only surprised i think it's going to be only surprised tracking uh only come on only surprised on one on one and six and then um what was the other two term, term oh no that's not the way i want this is not it the other term is um surprise three and six surprise creatures creatures three and six okay all right that's a six-sided dice roll so if you understand the surprise rules for um beck me you'll understand that dm usually rolls six-sided dice for these and uh on each part just determine who is surprised or not usually it's a one to two, uh, one on a two you're surprised um in this case it's going to be a little bit different because you're dealing with ranger okay so what's this um coin dropping while both the, the barbarian and ranger are inspired by 1e the class is almost perfectly matched for 1e okay i see good to know correct on languages the ranger can choose any language with bonus from intelligence yep i figured that was the case cool got it next uh let's deal with the next ability that they have because we've got the danger sense sorted out now ranger tracking which is hugely complicated and there's no way i can transfer into here in an easy way to make this work so i'm not going to try okay um the ranger has the ability to track creatures both underground and in dungeons and caverns and outdoors in the wilderness and urban areas underground tracking a ranger must have observed the creature within three turns or 30 minutes so turns in a uh, a turn is different in Beck me compared to what you might be used to. Um, a turn is ten minutes long. Okay, it's not your normal turn that you're used to. Prior to attempting to track, so they've got to observe them for thirty minutes. This is an underground location. The chance for success uh, can be adjusted by the following modifiers included: those for the outdoor uh, tracking. So um, dirt floor or using a dusty area is plus one. So there's going to be easy to track creatures passing through a secret door minus one okay outdoor tracking a ranger has the ability to track both man and beast in an outdoor environment the tracking role can be adjusted due to different effects of the environment the following is just a sample uh, terrain is soft enough to hold an imprint plus one uh, terrain allows occasional marks or obvious signs of passage plus one for every six creatures in the party uh, being tracked plus one terrain prevents all but the 
uh, minutes hist um, traces of passage such as smooth stone roll a d12 or 12 sided dice instead of a d6 okay for every day since the tram trail was made minus one for every half hour of preparation that uh, has fallen um that has fallen on the trail minus one if efforts are made by the quarry to uh, purposefully hide the trail minus one next i'm not going to go through all of that there's there's no way i'm just going to be tracking <laughs> and that's it i'm not going to say anything else in my my character sheet it's going to be enough work as it is so druid magic user spells which we don't get because we're not level eight okay at level eight rangers gain limited druidic spell abilities that function like the cleric at ninth level rangers also gain limited magic user spell ability that functions like that of the magic user uh, because they gain this ability at ninth level it is recommended that they choose the spells they wish to learn um, rangers may not use druid or magic user scrolls so you still can't use a scroll divine magic item use which is only available if you're level 10 ranger you may use any non-written magic non-written magic items with which pertain to clairvoyance clear audience clear audience clairvoyance esp and telepathy okay gaining followers at level 10 the, the ranger attracts a body of uh, 2 to 24 followers which is very consistent with um, advanced dungeons and dragons note that these henchmen when lost can never be replaced the dm will determine the ranger's followers so um this is again very much in line with ad and d and that's it so we've actually done everything we need on our character sheet there isn't really anything else to to put in here um, i'm not going to go into more detail on the tracking or the information gathering uh, it would just be a bit too hard to try and transfer that stuff into here but in terms of mobility we're only wearing leather armor so i guess encumbrance is a factor we can do the encumbrance i know there's always somebody who says what about encumbrance i'm like oh, okay maybe so let me just put in uh, some of the special abilities so we don't forget them damage bonus uh tracking and uh, danger sense probably and there are more okay but we won't we won't go any further than that you just have to look further down uh next what was i going to do yes encumbrance i was going to do the encumbrance so let's go i'm going to put a dash here and a dash here and combat speed combat movement combat move and then run move okay right over here go to encumbrance encumbrance is on page 30 so if we go to page 30 which is probably more like there is this it uh is that the right one no this one and zoom out maybe a little help okay go down 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 here we go right here so because we're wearing leather armor I don't think we're going to slow down our combat speed we're just going to make it 40 and our running speed will be 120 so right here we're not carrying that much stuff so let's just jump across here 40 and 20, 120 40 feet 120 all right and that is it We've done everything you can obviously put in age height weight eye color hair color that sort of stuff i'm not going to worry about that um i'm going to leave all that alone but it's done the character has been built now now that we've done that <clears throat> and and fairly quickly really considering there's there's a lot of things to cover <laughs> there, there were a few what do you got here jasper um for my play test game with my kids i have that two page printout with a character sheet specifically for tracking i've um really tried to simplify it to work better with be back me yeah it, it still feels like it's it's quite a lot of work but then um i mean that's ad and d i definitely feel like had a lot more little little rules that you would and modifiers that you would attach to things 
So, yeah. I'm not a huge expert in the field, dude. <laughs> I'm just trying to explain how to build your Ranger in a live stream. Um, most roles for tracking end up between two and four and three, uh, two and four and three at early levels. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. So we're done for today in terms of building a ranger for um, Beck Me Basic Dungeons and Dragons or Homebrew. I will not be building any more Beck Me characters this year. And we will return to building characters for Bet Me or Basic D&D. But if I do return to doing that, we'll be building a character for second level or third level. Okay? Because some of the character classes don't get things like spells till level two or three. Or some of their abilities don't show up till... I mean, it's usually basically... It's the cleric. It's generally the cleric. Um, so we'll, we'll build characters at those levels as well for those people who want it. But this is level one. I wanted to just deal with level one to begin with. So what is happening on this day, since today is the character build day and I'm not doing Bet Me for a while, not till sometime next year and I don't know when, what sort of characters are we building in the future? I'm sure that is your question, correct? No? Yes, maybe? Um, it'll be this. So for those of you who are unaware, this is a slightly different rule system. Um... It's probably not going to appeal to everybody. It is certainly a fairly simple uh, simple game. Um, it's a very dark game. It sort of uh, embraces the concept that your character is probably going to die. Uh, it is much harder to play. It's not an easy game. It is more suited to people who uh, do not cry or do not get worried about character death. Okay? So if you're not that sort of person, this would probably not be the thing that you want. <laughs> I'm going to say it now. I have played this game um, a couple of times. Not a lot of it, though. I've built a character for it. Uh, I would say that building a character for it is very confusing because of the layout of the book. Not so much because the system itself is confusing, but simply because of the layout of the book. There are a number of classes in here, and there's a non-class character build as well. You can also just get generated characters, but again, the whole idea is to help people learn how to build these classes so since I've done it, I'm going to do it again, and that means about seven live streams this year, which probably will round out this year in terms of um, character building, uh, will be based around uh, Morkbork or Merkborky. I don't know, however you, you pronounce this thing. I mean, I, don't, I can't really say I know how to do that. And I'm a Kiwi too, so that's English spoken by somebody who likes to string everything together into one word so, <laughs> so that's what we're going to be doing next week if you're not into that totally understand if you want to see how it's done i'm going to try to make sure i have a nice simple process so you can follow through with me to get it done okay um and we'll see how that goes uh, I, i'm i would it's very different to what you probably played before it's not an older version of D and D. It's not a D and D clone, really. It really isn't a D and D clone. It's kind of its own thing. Yep. Right. I'm going to finish up this poll here uh, and see what the response results were. So, do you want do you want to make a ranger for basic Beck Me Dungeons and Dragons? Yes, fifty four percent. So, the in the link down in the description, you'll find a link to all of the stuff that you need to be able to make a ranger. It is on Jasper's um, Patreon. It's sitting there. Okay. Uh, undecided, 18%, just watching, 18%, no, 9% out of 11 votes. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. You know, and it's not going to be for everybody, and that's that's fine. Um, all right, now, this is where I'm going to disappear, because <laughs> I need to. Uh, I'm going to say a huge thank you to uh, Jasper AK for providing me with the documentation for the, the Ranger, the homebrewed Ranger for Dungeons and Dragons, or basic Dungeons and Dragons, or Beck Me D and D. Okay, thank you very much. I want to thank all of my patrons who support me on Patreon. Really do appreciate it. I want to thank everybody who took part in the poll today, everybody who's been watching and listening, but particularly those people who have been in the uh, in the live chat commenting because it really does help when you're here. So I don't feel like I'm just talking to myself, and because I need you to roll dice and interact and sort of respond, it's always great too. So thank you, Fred Huber, Jasper AK. Really huge thank you. Um, also want to say um, thank you to Pale Rider, um, Dungeons and Chronics. 
Specifically, I would like to say a huge thank you to Dungeons & Chronics because you were here and rolling dice early on, got things moving, and I really do appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, I think today would have been a lot less fun and moved along a lot slower if it hadn't been for Dungeons & Chronics. So a huge thank you to you. But, again, as I said, Fred Huber is a patron. Thank you for being here, and um, I really do appreciate uh, your support. It, it's nice to be able to keep doing this sort of thing. Okay, so wherever you are in the, uh, in the world, whether it be the, the afternoon, the morning, the night, or is it the morning, the afternoon, the night, it's one of those, or the wee wee early morning. Please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours, and hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.